What's up, everybody? It's Matt Johnson. We are back with another episode of Real Estate Uncensored. This is the place where you get actionable ideas, insight, and inspiration to turn your real estate career into life of freedom. We've got a couple of awesome, awesome guests with us. We've got the Gene Volpe here with us as well, the evil bald ninja, as he is on pretty much every Friday with a tech or social media tip. We've got a bunch of stuff to get into today. We're talking about modern marketing and personal branding and what we can do as agents to differentiate ourselves in the market. So we've got a bunch of stuff to go over. Uh, we have actually two phenomenal guests with us today and Gene. And so I may lose my Greg Wrangling certification on this episode. We'll see if I can uh, keep all of these people in line and actually deliver some valuable content in between all of the laughter. So anyway, we had a great pre-show. It's going to be awesome. Greg is already shaking his head, refusing to deliver any content whatsoever. It's really just going to be us messing around today on the show. No, that's right. The Junior Grandmaster, what's up today? Orale Vato. Um, so I got this text a few minutes ago, right before we went on air. Okay. And this is this is what you get when you work with clients that appreciate you and respect you in, in your business. So I got this. It says, he says, this is being written to me and my my lender, uh, Casey. He says, hey, guys, thanks. Uh, just a short note again to thank you for all the help and assistance. It's been almost six months now, and we're settling into our new normal. Greg, I know the Danville house was a wreck and hard to sell, but you persevered and made it happen. Casey, thanks for sticking with us through the IRS uh, issues. Without you guys, this would not have happened so these are the small wins in, in our real estate crazy ass lives that you guys need to really appreciate and you know when someone reaches out like this you gotta reach back not reach around that's just weird they're clients not a piece of meat but you know reach back and just appreciate them head nod yes we're only two minutes into the show and i've accomplished my 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 goal goodbye cruel world i am out <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yes, and uh, I, I fully expect that next time I show up to your place, Greg, that that text is framed and over your bed. All right, so let's uh, let's bring in our guests. First of all, Tanya Everhart and Michael Carr from Brandface. Guys, welcome. We appreciate you being here. Hey, thank Hello. you for having us, Matt. So we were introduced by the wonderful Christina Daves, who's been a repeat guest of the show. Uh, so you guys connected and, uh, and and kind of introduced us. We got to chatting and obviously wanted to bring you on the show because you guys have got a lot of very valuable things and I think fits in very nicely with some of the things that we've talked about on the show in the past as well. Uh, and then we've also got uh, Gene Volpe, the evil bald ninja, the Volpinator is here. What's up today? I'm, I'm, I'm calling bullshit. I'm not talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> We, here's how you started the show. We have two wonderful guests and Gene. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. I appreciate it. Thanks. <laughs> that is true. That's right. Uh, I, I promise an apology, uh, an apology send out card is in the Sounds mail good. to you. I'm sure. looking for it. It'll be Philadelphia Eagle theme. <laughs> well, at least there's one right. winner in this crew. That's right. All right. So let's uh, let's jump on this. Um, I've got a question that I want to pitch you guys real quick that I think will get us started nicely. But, Tanya, before we do, just share a little bit. Uh, what is Brandface so people kind of get some context on who you guys are? Sure, sure. And then I'll let my illustrious partner introduce himself. But mm -hmm. Brandface is a personal branding firm for real estate agents. And in a nutshell, we help real estate agents differentiate themselves. You know, what's going on now is there's tons of agents out there and there's lots of marketing tools, lots of ways that they can promote themselves. Uh, but a lot of people end up using the same marketing tools exactly the same way. And so, you know, really nobody stands out in a lot, a lot of times. So we're here to change all of that and give uh, real estate agents that definition and purpose that they deserve in a way to put themselves out there. that will be different from everybody else. So that's, that's pretty much the top level picture of it. And uh, Michael and I, as we were sharing before the show started, we uh, got connected because he was a client of mine first. And then he, he listened to everything I said, Matt, and he did everything I said, and then he became successful. I mean, imagine that. Yes. No, I believe me. I, I, had, yeah. I had such high hopes for, for Greg that that would happen, and uh, Greg summarily yeah. ignores everything that I say. So I'm glad I you found somebody. Wait, yes, wait right. what did you say, Matt? What'd yeah, exactly. Say? Uh, so, so Michael, you were you were doing real estate, right? And and I would love to yeah. catch me up on kind of how that how that relationship developed and what the outcome was for you that ended up with you actually being a partner with Tanya. Yeah, um, well, I'm the founder of Michael Carr and Associates, uh, based here in Atlanta, north of Atlanta in the suburbs, and uh, we are anything real estate, and we've got the confidence of over sixty eight thousand residential transactions in thirty states. Good. And so what, the way that came about was I was an auctioneer by trade and I was in the real estate business. I uh, got caught up in the mortgage debacle situation in uh, 
partnered with a company out of Irvine, California, and we ended up selling all the REOs for the Bear Stearns portfolio. Took us about eight years to get through that. We got through all of that. I knew I needed a brokerage. I needed to levitate that brokerage that we had just sitting there while I was on the run. I met Tanya, and as she said, the secret to my success is listening to everything she said. (laughs) 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 I pay him for that dearly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Wise man. There's a lot of Starbucks gift cards involved in that endorsement. That's awesome. All right, so – let me throw this question out, um, and I think let's uh, – let, Tanya, let's start with you. So this is a question from Todd Sherrod. This is in the Lead Gen Scription Objections Facebook group, and if you guys aren't a member, uh, go join that. Uh, the group just passed 50,000 members. Uh, so uh, Todd says, times are changing. Uh, we're seeing more and more teams leave their brand uh, brokerage and go indie. Uh, those that are in a franchise, do you value it and what the, the broker provides for you? Um, Tanya, the question to you is just – what, what's your view on on people kind of leaving and going to more like brands that really the public doesn't know? I know there, there's agents that have a lot of fear around the idea of leaving their supposedly big established brand and going to a brand nobody's heard of or going to EXP or going to, you know, KW if KW isn't big in their area. Um, have you found that it makes a difference? And what's your opinion on that? Okay, well, I'm going rogue here, guys. So, um, <laughs> only eight minutes in. You can't go rogue yet. <laughs> it's happening. It is happening. <laughs> this is okay. going to happen. Just lay back. <laughs> this is, this yeah. Is... Brace yourselves, guys. Um, so, I, I love the big brands, and I think they have a lot to bring to the table. But at the end of the day, what's on the back of, of, of our book here is people don't do business with a logo, they do business with a person. Thank you. And so every single person that whether they stay underneath that umbrella and champion that bigger brand is fine, no problem. But that's not the brand they're doing business with. They're doing business with the individual and the individual needs to set aside a way that they are different from the other competitors, the other individuals. So I'm a, I'm a big champion of breaking out on your own in terms of personal branding. It doesn't mean you have to be disrespectful to the to the brokerage or the agency. It just means that you have to be more respectful to yourself. Yeah, you know what? I I deal with this comment all the time when people are coming over to our EXP team. As as, as this grows and as a flywheel kicks in, and people wrap their mind around this whole concept of stepping away from you know the Coldwells, you know the Remaxes, the KWs, the, the established brands, and going indie or going to EXP or doing something along those lines. They say, well, what, what what do people say when you're not with the biggest brand in the area? And I tell them the exact same thing. Nobody cares. I mean, nobody cares they, because they're hiring. Tanya, they're hiring Michael, they're hiring Evil Ninja, they're hiring Matt, because they you have created a bond, a relationship with that other person, which they respect and want to help grow. And it, we, my past brokerage, no disrespect to them at all, they are they are them, I am me, but they would always tell us that you know what we've spent millions of dollars building our brand. You better use our brand. Don't brand yourself, brand us. And I'm like, you selfish bitch. You just want <laughs> your name out there instead of mine and so right. I, we refused and I, i've seen zero pushback and i think well, it's and thank happen god you more. did because now it's portable now you have a brand that can move with you which of course is the the, the that is the problem they're looking to avoid but for your business for the longevity and the, and the life of your business you have to build your own brand so that it's portable so you can take it with you to whatever brokerage you go to so michael let's go back to you i'm curious your perspective on this uh so when you kind of left the ario world and got into traditional I mean, obviously, you had a choice of, like, do I build a brand? Do I like, go with an established? Do I take my team or take my brokerage into another brokerage and become, like, a Century 21 award or a Remax Centennial or whatever? I mean, you had a bunch of different choices. Uh, what was your thinking process, and why did you decide to go the route that you did? Well, um, I've always been okay with being the individual, uh, even in the individual brokerage. And we started off with a in a small office. Now we've got we're work, working on our third location in the North Crescent of Atlanta. Um, so I was never afraid to take on the big boys for the very reason that everybody's already said uh, that you know people are going to do business on Main Street with you because mm-hmm. they recognize you. And even if you're in a big brokerage situation, you still are competing with everybody else in that big brokerage situation, right? And so I've never been afraid to take that on. And we did so as an independent. I vetted several of the big groups uh, Mm -hmm. to see about buying a franchise and see if that was something that I wanted to go. 
they all offer something different. Obviously, if uh, some some agents want to come in and they want to get the training and some of the things that are really really like spot on with your big franchises, then that's perfectly fine. But at the end of the day, it has nothing to do with the UCI. Well, your yeah, UCI a, a is going question. to be how much you, you're going to work. Were, were you interested or even looking to bring on relatively new agents? Oh yeah, absolutely, and we okay. we recruit that uh, even now very actively now. We're, we're not a come one, come all type of a brokerage. Uh, our model is a boutique brokerage. I want to be able to touch uh, every one of the agents that I have, and then as it grows, have other brokers that can be readily and, uh, available to anybody that wants, that has a question. So the newbies don't get lost yeah. in that fray. You know, you guys know, you've seen it, you've built teams, you understand. People don't know what to do, and they need somebody to say, okay, come along, do this, do this, do this, do this. And so we wanted to build a model that could touch every one of our agents and also be one degree of separation. A broker, me uh, me originally, and now the associate brokers, to be able to be one degree of separation to that other client also to help shore up those deals and, and don't get lost. So yeah. it's very important to us that we don't that people don't get lost in the fray like happens the bigger the broker. Yeah, yeah. I love it. A lot, of the, uh, a, lot of the, a lot of the bigger brokerages, and again, no disrespect to them in the slightest, but they look at you transactionally, not relationship-based. And so they mm -hmm. see, okay, you know, bald ninja here, you know, he may or may not make it, but fuck it, we'll take five grand from him and then kick him to the kick him to the wolves, and he'll be he'll be right. a stat, and that's it. Yeah. And you know, yeah. it, it, when in, I think what you guys are going to do, you you go into a relationship-based, and you want to see these agents thrive, not just survive and live a life of their dreams. I was talking to uh, Mike Holbrook uh, before I jumped on the show. Good dude, knuckles to you player. Um, and he and I were talking about the meaning of freedom. And what does that mean? You know, the big brokerages keep you in a box. You know, wear your you know, C21 gold jacket, which Matt has, I think, two or three of them in his closet. He doesn't bring anyone, doesn't show to anybody. Um, <laughs> um, you know me, I love my gold jacket. You know, or fly the fly the balloon, or wear red. I mean, all these different brands brand themselves, not branding you. And what does freedom mean? Does freedom mean that you are part of a big brand, or does freedom truly mean you can be a hundred percent authentic to yourself, stand above the crowd, work on your own schedule, and do your business that you want to do the way you want to do it? So I'm fascinated to see what Michael and Tanya have here for us today, just to show people that there is a different. There's a different variety of freedom, and it's different for every person out there. So I'm I'm really excited. This is so timely to have you guys on the show. So I'm excited to see what you guys are going to bring. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, Tanya, let's dive in. So take me back a little bit to some of the things you know when you first started working with Michael, for example, or when you first start working with a client. What are some of the questions that you ask, and some of the things that you're trying to discover uh, to get that process started, figuring out what the hell is this person's personal brand? What is it now? Where, where can we move this to where it'll actually make a difference? Sure. Yeah. Um, so what we try to do, and I love the word that uh, Greg just uses authentic, you know, we want to try to match somebody up with their authentic brand. And so we look at what sets them apart, not just professionally, you know, their expertise, their skills, their experience, all those things. But we also look at their personal traits, you know, personality. What do they like to do in their spare time? You know, what is it that we can pull in on the personal side of things that's really going to have them waking up in the morning, jolting out of bed and own in that brand you know mm -hmm. we call it breathing your brand we want them to be mm -hmm. able to live that all day long so we ask a lot of questions with regard to personal things and professional things we really drill down into that we also look at who is your ideal customer okay because so many times we get on the phone with people that say well I don't want to shut anybody out I want to be all things to all people and I want to help everybody and so the first thing I say to them at that point is if you try to help everyone you'll help yourself right out of business yeah. so so we really help them focus on that ideal customer and sometimes people have more than one ideal customer but usually they're not more than two deep and then crafting that message, figuring out what it is about you that's different and unique that will appeal to that ideal customer, there's where the magic is, right? Something that they'll appreciate. And people can be branded, their personal brand can be lots of different kind of things. They can be branded to a geographic area, although we don't do that very much. We usually brand attributes. What is it about this person that's just gonna like pop when somebody sees their brand? So those are really the things that we dig into first. 
explain that to me. When you say pop okay. about their personal brand, help, go go deeper on that. I want to learn more about that. You got so it. What, I mean, okay. Let's do a case study. John, let's do Johnson Face. What's going to make him, you know, what's going to make him pop if he was a real estate agent? <laughs> Okay, well, how about if I just give you an an, uh, an example of one of the agents that we've branded? Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, let's do that. So, for instance, we have Teresa Stark. She's in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And Teresa, um, she and her husband are deep sea fishermen. They're they're competitive deep sea fishermen, fisher women. Not sure how to say that, but fisher people, <laughs> but fisher anyway, people. There you go, fisher people. So, so Teresa's gonna kill me for this one. So, uh, so that's one of the things that they're so passionate about on the personal side, right? And what that brings to their real estate business or Teresa's real estate business is they know the waterways um, better than anybody else in that area mm -hmm. along the Fort, uh, Fort Lauderdale area. That means they know where people want to live, where they should be living, all those areas along the waterfront. And Teresa wanted to be that luxury waterfront person. But she had been in real estate at the time for about 13, 14 years and had never really just been able to break the ice into that luxury waterfront area. So she knew she had everything it took. She, you know, she the, From the personal side, she knew the water. She knew the homes in that area from the perspective of a boat owner, which was really important. And she uh, she was very good with the social scene in that area. She went to a lot of events, was very involved in that, but she couldn't quite break through it. So we took a look at her brand, and her brand was just the typical. It was a beautiful brand. It was a luxury brand. You had her photo on, on some things, and then in the background was this gorgeous luxury home. But it wasn't screaming waterfront. It wasn't saying, I am the waterfront chick. So we started by giving her this brand identifier or tagline. And she is now known as your home navigator. And of course, those two things blended really well because home navigator, I'm going to find you a home, but navigation also has this natural tendency to water, right? So yeah. we kind of perfectly blended those things together. And that's a brand she's super proud of. Then her photo shoot came along, the background images that go with her brand, all of the messaging, like an elevator pitch for her, uh, things like that, that really at a glance, you can see that's a crisp, fresh, waterfront kind of look there. The photos of her were very beautiful, breezy looking, kind of, you know, like I'm on the water, I'm this luxury waterfront person. And then the, the messaging with it all pulled together. So even at a glance of a business card or a Facebook cover photo, those kind of things, it's like, boom, you know, that, I get that, I get that. So it kicks mm. open the door. I really like that a lot. A lot of people don't really put two and two together. So if an agent was thinking about this right now, because there's going to be tens of thousands of people that hear this, you know, what are they going to do? I mean, if they're scratching their head going, fuck, how do I, how do I do this brand thing? I mean, the chick in the boat, that's a, that's an easy one, but I don't have a boat. I, I'm not a professional fisher person because we, we're not gender specific here. We're, 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 we're neutral to everybody. That's right. We um, don't see color, Mrs. McDaniel. <laughs> <laughs> fuck it. <laughs> Mrs. McDaniel, <laughs> only my friends call me that. That's right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I love that because the, I think what trips up a lot of agents is uh, the idea of focus and, and kind of missing out on a big segment of the market. And it's funny because I was literally just reading this this morning, uh, Al Reese's book, uh, The 22 Immutable Laws of Marketing, and he points out the target is not the market. And that is a big thing to kind of wrap our brain around. Um, people will come to us and go, hey, I know you normally only do waterfront luxury, but I have a home that's three blocks from the water. I have a home that's a little bit below, like we're not quite luxury, you know. Um, would you be willing? I know if it's not too much trouble, if you could come over and take a look at our home. I know it's a little outside your specialty, um, but we'd love to work with you. We see your stuff everywhere. We'd really love for you to come and take a look at our home. Like we have a, a hard time, I don't know for whatever reason, like wrapping our brain around that idea. The target is not the market. We can target a certain type of uh, client and other people will still work with us. It's not like they go, oh, well, I'm not going to, that's, that's not for me. I'm never going to work with that person. Amen. Crazy. Yeah. That's yeah. exactly right. Yeah. So, and, and Michael, I'm going to let you speak on focus, uh, on focus, but I, I would like to say this. There are so many times that, uh, that I'm on the phone with somebody and they're telling me that I, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to cut anybody out. I can do business with everybody. 
and mm -hmm. then we really you know work with them to get them to understand you you take a look at that ideal customer and all of your marketing and branding and your messaging and everything should be directed at speaking exactly to that ideal customer mm -hmm. it doesn't mean for instance look just like you said if we brand someone as a waterfront person it doesn't mean that you never again get to sell a home inland all that means is you don't waste your time and your money and your marketing efforts on those inland people you put mm -hmm. your time your money and your marketing toward that ideal customer and then michael's brilliant about focus and and you know what he thinks about that i'll let you tackle that michael well <clears throat> it, it, it through tanya and uh, and the brand face principles it, i begin to, to to realize that it is very hard to calculate the cost of confusion and like if you get up every day, we have agents all the time that tell us this. Well, I get up, I don't know what to do today. Or I get up and I don't, I don't. you know, the thing about brand face and the thing about you're building your career as a real estate agent is you have to get up with a certain amount of focus every day. Figuring out your ideal customer and targeting that ideal customer automatically pulls that focus in for you. And as you said, Matt, um, and, and, and unpracticed, which is what I love about it because it's, it's, that's one of our favorite books also, is that, that you're not, you're really not cheating yourself out of the rest of the market. You were actually just targeting, as Tanya said, and then now you have a purpose. And then with the brand and the brand face, now you've got something to live. You've got a suit to put on every day, and you know how you feel in that suit, and you know how to behave in that suit, and you know what you're looking for when you're in that suit. And then by doing that, we find people so much more productive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, you know, I've talked about that a lot in our some of our coaching and training sessions about how identifying your your perfect client. And I think, Michael, what you're talking about is the cl the clarity, you know, it brings into focus, which brings into productivity, which brings into success. Um, mm -hmm. But it's sometimes it's scary to not be inclusive of, of everybody. But like you guys are saying, we're not yeah. unincluding them. We're just saying, hey, look, this is my primary focus. We're going to we're gonna laser focus into this. Like in our area here, we laser focused on two cities, Alamo and Danville. And for a while, we were the absolute kings of those areas, but now we have to you know, stretch out a little bit, and so we're narrowing down the type of people we're going to work in a broader sense. So, I mean, Tony, mm -hmm. can that, is that in yes. theory for what you guys, you know, what you guys are teaching, can that be done as well, or, or, or am I completely losing my marbles? No, 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 definitely not. Um, it so, can't be done. Well, you may be losing your marbles, your marbles but not about <laughs> that. <laughs> You're not, not about that. Marbles, That's right. At least on this topic, Greg. Right? <laughs> That's right. I told you I'd help you wrangle him, Matt. <laughs> I appreciate that. I appreciate it. <laughs> no problem. I got your back. Uh, no, that's uh, that's. I mean, that that's one of the key ways. Is yeah, you you keep keep your focus small and narrow, but expand geographically, right? Yeah, so, so we look at it as a couple of different ways. So your brand uh, is your, your brand identity, what you want, that one thing you want to be known for, right, that kicks open the door to get people to want to learn more. That's your strategy. That's the umbrella strategy up here, okay? Where you target that message and to whom you target that, that's more tactical. So let's say, for instance, if you had two ideal customers, you've got one and then one that's right on the heels of that one that's that secondary customer. You can send out something to each one of those customer types. Your call to action might be a little bit different. A little bit of the messaging might be a little different, but who you are and what you bring to the table should never change. That's your strategy. The so strategy is why do business with me? Tactic is why do business with me today? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like gotcha. that. I love it. I like that because you only get, like we were talking okay. about earlier. It's like with my business, I was able to pick it up and move you know, to a different brokerage, but nothing about our brand has shifted. So we have a right. new emblem of EXP, but the McDaniel Callahan team is still us. It's still the three blue shirts. It's still the dad and his two sons, which were not actually two sons, but we gave up that battle about 10 years ago. We just say, yep, that's <laughs> us. Um, <laughs> But, it, but that brand of stays true. I mean, it, yeah. it, Michael, what was that thing for you um, that you really found as your identifier? You know, what 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 what, what, what kind of what what was that process and you know, you know, transformation like for you? Well, it was subtle, honestly, um, it, because I had already come up with the tagline. We were Michael Carr and Associates. Anything real estate. And when Tanya came on board with us, she hated it. She was like, well, that's not focus at all. Anything real estate sounds like, you, you know, you'll literally do everything, right? Anything. And, uh, 
And there was a certain amount of truth to that. I mean, at the time, we had our fingers in a lot of different pies. And I have learned as a, as a maturing business person to, to, to continue to narrow that focus and, as you said, broaden that geographical area, and it's made all the difference in the world. So at the time, we had a construction company. We were building houses, and, uh, you know, the, the area that I was in had a huge shortage of that. Of course, I'm an auctioneer. I was still auctioning houses off. I still do that on some online platforms. And then we had the brokerage, and we were growing the brokerage. We've got the rental business and our rental portfolios we manage. And, and so we had all of these different genres that we were in in the real estate business. So when I explained that to her, then she began to see that focus. But what she did was begin to narrow that down more. She's, okay, we can't have more than three verticals that you're going to put people in. And now, effectively, we're down to two. We have our my auction business, and then we have the real estate business. And even the rental business inside of our arms length brokerage business has been pared down to where we don't really work with renters anymore unless they're inside the portfolio we are managing. Now, what we did uh, as a sidebar to that was we still get a lot of calls from people, can you help me find a house to rent? We don't fail those people when they come to us. It's just that nobody on my team does it. We refer those out to other people in the area. So that way we know that that, that need is getting covered, but my people aren't taking their time up in that particular uh, genre. So she began, to, she began to even tighten that suit even more, even more than that. And then as a personal identifier, uh, when she found out that I had been involved in the auctions like I had, then she, she, ca she came up with uh, America's Top Selling Real Estate Auctioneer because nobody mm -hmm. has auctioned off more real estate in this country than I have through the, through the years of 2007 and 2014. And so, uh, so we did that as a personal tagline for me, but we used the company tagline more than anything else. And we put it everywhere, billboards, geotargeting ads, everywhere. It's anything real estate. And we knew that it began to work when people came into my office and said, you know, I, okay, I was looking for real estate in the, age, in the area and I saw your sign or I saw your geotargeting ad and you're anything real estate, we ought to be working with you. And we love that when that happens, obviously. So cool. Evil Ninja, that is a perfect segue into you. Take it away, the baldest of the bald. How would you take it and do geotargeting and what would you do for an expanding new brand? You know, what, what would you do? Uh, let's uh, let's eliminate the geotargeting altogether. I think what Tanya was saying before about branding your face, right? Which I love that, by the way, brand face. I love that. Ch taking your brand and turning it into your voice, and then having that voice kind of leak out across all of your branding and social media. So going back to the to the you know the fisherman or fisher person or fisher woman or whatever it might be, um, if that ends up being what your brand is about, and and you come up with a creative tagline then what I would all, always do is, you know, let's just take social media, for example. We would take that brand, make it make it the brand so that it looks consistent and, and congruent across all of our space. But I would also have the client incorporate a lot of real-world phishing things into their social media. So instead of just going, I, I'm the Fisher real estate agent and just come buy a house, I would, I would incorporate different things like short videos on me on the boat short videos on tactics you can use to catch X, Y, and Z fish, short tactics on boom, boom, boom. So I can benefit from that emotional attachment with people that also love the water so that they're seeing me, seeing me, seeing me, following that content, ingesting and digesting that content. And then when they do need my real estate services, they're only thinking about me. So I would roll that brand into my voice and then really launch the voice across all platforms. I like the tips. Yep, I absolutely. like the tips and tricks. I agree. Mm -hmm. I'm, I, I, I like to be on the water. I'm a water dog. I, we've had a uh, ski boat for, I don't know, since I was little. But I blew the engine up literally three years ago, and we haven't been able to make it work. So now that we're getting back on the water, I I would love to brand you know brand myself to be around that, that water more. But, I mean, it's something that's, that's uh, that if I could give tips on how to work the waterways of the delta or how to trailer the boat correctly or how to – do this, that, or another thing, the boat lovers will gravitate towards you. Yep. And then I, I don't, then I get to work with the people I want Plus to. You and a, not, you need a you hobby, know. Greg. We need, we need to get you a hobby. So let's, let's, let's get on that. Let's get you, let's get you a boat Talking again. to you is my working, hobby. A working boat. First of all, that's a horrible I just call hobby. call you, buddy. It was you talking to me and <laughs> calling me. So that, clearly that cannot be your hobby. Um, but there, there is, there is something that I wanted to, uh, to get into and get, get Tanya's perspective on here real quick. Uh, there was, 
just going back to uh, to Al Reese's stuff with the immutable laws of marketing, there's a great point that he makes, and it's something that always trips up agents that get that I get a kick out of, and I'm sure you run into it too, <clears throat> which is <clears throat> you cannot differentiate yourself on something that nobody can possibly disagree with. And quality is a great one. Integrity, honesty, like being available. Being available is a horrible one because, like that, you end up getting calls from people like Greg at all hours of the morning, right? <laughs> Thank God I don't brand myself as being available to Greg all the time because Greg would take advantage of it. But we do that in our own businesses all the time. And I always get a kick out of it when people attempt to, they attempt to brand themselves off of something that nobody could possibly disagree with. And Al Reese makes a great point. He says, look, if nobody's willing to take the opposite stand, then you haven't found anything that you can actually build a brand around. So you can't build a brand around something like quality because nobody stands for unquality. Nobody stands for poor quality. And But we do that all the time. We build around things like integrity and honesty. And Tanya, you, you must run into this in the initial consultations all the time. That's the first place that agents especially go to is, I would say, probably those three. Honesty, integrity, commitment. Um, and then availability. Those are like the three or four things that everybody hangs their hat on. Yeah, and those are probably the most boring too. Yeah. You know, <laughs> they're very well, boring. Who, who, who says I'm unavailable? Vanilla. Sorry. I mean, right, there are a few, right. you know what I'm saying? Like me, like I, I, I am Don't famously unavailable. Dan Kennedy said he was, he's yes. famously unavailable, which I love that, so I've adopted that. Um, but for the most part, nobody says, hey, I'm the dishonest agent. Nobody says right. I'm an unavailable exactly. agent. Nobody exactly. says I'm the agent that's not, I'm not chock full of integrity. I don't even know what that is. We actually have that request quite a bit when people say, you know, I just, I like, I feel like I need the word trust in my tagline somewhere. And it's like, uh-uh, nope, I'm not going there. Hire somebody else. I'm not putting trust in there. I'm not putting expert in a tagline. <laughs> you know, those are very cliche terms. And frankly, no one believes it. They yeah, don't believe it that. And so another thing is don't put something in your tagline nobody's ever going to believe, you know, yeah, and, and that you can't live up to, you know. I mean, I'm sure somebody can live up to being trustworthy and they are an expert in a certain mm. area of, of real estate. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe not. Maybe. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, you know, it has to not be boring. It has to be authentic to you. And, uh, and really the best brands are polarizing. Mm -hmm. You yes. don't want to brand everybody, mm -hmm. you know, they, they really are polarizing. Mm -hmm. You know, Great something point. my dad trademarked, uh, he's, uh, he and my mom are very, you know, religious based. Um, and so he has trademarked himself as the real estate evangelist. And he wanted to put that as our, as our, as our, as our, one of our tagline. And I'm like, I don't think so. But you know, he, he, but that people, it stands out and people, it's a conversation starter and it's completely authentic to him. He's not number one. He's not the area specialist. He's not this, that, or another thing. He's the real estate evangelist. He's a, he evangelizes, he evangelizes real estate. He's out there protecting the sellers and protecting the buyers and keeping bad agents away from them and you know, all that stuff. So it's right. I mean, is that something that, that, that would work? I mean, is that what we're talking about here? That's exactly what we're talking about. The more yeah, narrow yeah. you go, the better, right? Because I yeah. tell your dad, he's dead on, you know? That's, oh, no, um, no, no, no. We love no, that no. when somebody's able to stand up and say, I own this, you know, and not, and not be afraid of what everybody else says or thinks. And realize, too, that your brand will – this is the one thing that's hard to get everybody to understand. I don't want to turn anybody off with my brand. I don't want to turn anybody off. And it's like, well, then you don't want one because yeah. <laughs> because it's going to turn somebody <laughs> off. Somebody yeah. is going to yeah, look at us and say, yeah. amen. Hey. Yeah, that is a big yeah. one. Like getting over the hurdle the of people having, uh, like your competitors yeah. having nasty things to say about you and your brand. Oh, yeah. I don't know why we care so much what they think. We we should mm -hmm. be we should be uh, you know aiming to put them out of business, not hoping they like us. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, we. Go ahead, Michael. Go ahead, Tony. Well, I was going <laughs> to say we've actually had clients. She was going to say the same thing. I was tell about <laughs> that we've actually had clients say that. Like we don't want that brand because you know it might it it might put off some of our competitors, and we're like that's, that's exactly crazy. what we want. And you know yes. it's like to go back. I want to say something about like the honesty, the integrity, the the those things like that. Those are attributes, right? And we we all go through ethics classes. We, they te they teach us that like anybody that's passed their state test and the national portion of the test to get a license you realize that they rephrase so many of those same questions in so many different ways 
because they're not really getting you to guess whether it's a yes or no answer or A, B, C, D, E answer. They want to know that you know inside that you have to treat people with ethics. They want to know that you have scenarios at least enough under your testing ability that you can be ethical whether you're an ethical person or not. So what, so what we teach in Brandface is the honesty, the integrity, the ethics, the morality, the, all of those things that are so cliche is how you live. That's the authenticity of how you live. It has nothing to do with your brand. Your, your brand can be, I'm the greatest real estate agent ever, period, right? And you're going to have people complain about that. The honesty, the, all of that other stuff is how you live. And it's sort of like Wolfgang Goethe said in, you know, in, uh, in Faust. He said, he said, as for criticism, a man cannot protest against it or deny it. He must live in spite of it, and eventually it will yield to him. So authentic, you know, we teach about authenticity very much because that is what's going to come out in your peripheral content. And when, and like uh, Greg started off reading that um, that text that he got, thanking him, that is his honesty, that is his integrity, that is his ethics. That has nothing yeah. to do with his brand. Mm -hmm. Well, and especially it's better. It's a lot better when we let other people say that for us anyway. So, for example, Amen. rather than us saying we are. You know, like I always get a kick out of people saying, well, I'm I'm the realtor in the area. Like, no, you're not. There's three. There's 40,000 others like uh, like <laughs> it's, it's saying like it sounds good. But it's what we're really doing is we're saying things that other people can't agree with. And Tanya, you're exactly right. Like what we should never be making claims that other people um, don't or can't believe they can't agree with us. Uh, saying you're an expert is a good example. Um, uh, saying you're the most trusted, saying that you're the most knowledgeable, the most experienced, for the most part, usually ends up being it's just puffery, right? Um, but if we let other people, by printing their, you know, putting their Facebook comments, getting their texts, getting their Google reviews, getting their Zillow reviews, like all that, like if we just put that out there, like it's much, much more believable when we don't say it and we let other people say nice things about us, right? Uh, rather than exactly. us saying it ourselves, especially not like in our brand. And I think, Tanya, that's your main point is don't put that in your brand. Let it, there's other ways to say that. There's other ways to convey that. It doesn't need to be your brand, right? Right. I Absolutely. think this, the, the quickest way to for me to question whether I can trust somebody is if they had the word trust in their brand. <laughs> 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 the most trusted realtor is like, no, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't, that's right. So I just, I just got, the, I got, I got the cold shivers and check for my money clip. Hang on. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know, one, of the, one of the things that we talked about, you know, offending people with your brand. You know, when we started this podcast, Matt and I, we named it Real Estate Uncensored, mainly because we we're going to talk about everything real estate. Well, I took it a whole new direction and started dropping F-bombs and, you know, doing all kinds of crazy stuff. I had a lot of blowback for, for that for a little bit, especially for my parents and, you know, other people. But I stayed true to what the brand was. And it was amazing to watch people shift on a dime when as soon as they saw the good that the show was doing and is doing, all of a sudden they're like, you know what, it's okay. It's okay. You're just being you. You're talking to a different demographic than I am. And so if you guys are fearful of being your authentic, true self, please take take my word on it. Like if you embrace yourself wholeheartedly in hashtag zero fucks given and you just move forward, dude, be the boater person, be the desert person, be the, you know, whatever you want to be and just own it. Because exactly. you're, you're like a tractor beam. People are going to be sucked towards you because they're, you know, something about you is in them. And you don't want to work with Bob from Remax. I mean, he's a douche. He's not authentic. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, before we go down too far down the road of uh, if Bob, poor Bob from Remax. He's really he's in his <laughs> poor Bob. Um, poor Bob. Uh, I want to go to uh, finish out with a couple of fun uh, tech uh, tech tips because I know Gene's got uh, something cool to share. Uh, we could go all, all day on branding, and we maybe we will. Michael, I'd love to have you. Uh, there's another podcast I run called the Team Building Podcast. Where we, we'd love to chat with you more about what you're doing there. And Tanya, there's some other avenues we can uh, we can get you booked on some stuff because there's there's so much more we could talk about, and and, and would love to. So, uh, but let's close out with this, Gene. The evil, the evil bald ninja. Uh, you have a fantastic tech tip for us today, and I want to go a little bit deeper on uh, on some of that video stuff. Let's do it. So All first right. thing, I want to give these guys a plug. Number one, everything that I talk about on this show is preceded by branding. Branding is the foundation of your marketing, and you have to get that right first. And we talked a little bit about confusion in the beginning. If your brand is confused across your platforms, and, and you're you're introducing that confusion into the market, you're going to be in big trouble. So you got to get out the brand face, 
figure out what that ends up looking like. Start that as your foundation and then work from there, not the other way around. So I just want to give them a quick plug real quick because, you know, I'm big on that. Mm -hmm. As for you. you got it. And, you know, the other thing I want to tell you, too, while you're looking at this, um, is that it's almost like if you don't see a picture of me and I keep telling you, no, 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 really, I'm really good looking. I swear I'm really good looking. I'm, no, 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 I mean it. I'm good. I promise you I'm really good looking. Your natural inclination is to think to yourself, this dude's probably not that great looking. So you have to tell people I'm trustworthy and you have to tell people, no, I'm this and that. There's That's a good right. chance they're going to do exactly the opposite of course, what you want them if, to do. If you're listening, for those of you who aren't watching the video version, if you're listening by audio, uh, Gene is a former supermodel. Uh, he actually is quite good looking. Um, and Gene, Gene has brought something special in for show and tell. Gene has mounted his gerbil onto the roll cage of a hot wheels car. So for anyone who can't see what we're saying, it's a gerbil on a roll cage from a hot wheels car. Well, listen, if anybody can't, here's what you got to do. This, this will help your business. He has a nice personality, Paul Franklin says. Go to RU Live, or RU, R, what is it, RU Uncensored, RULive.com. R-E-Uncensored.com. That's right. What is it? Wait, what is it? R-E-Uncensored.com. There you go. R-E-Uncensored.com. Look at it. This is a phone stabilizer. That's my phone. And this is a stabilization device. This is, unfortunately for Matt, not a gerbil. That is a microphone. Richard Gere comes to mind. That microphone reason. plugs into the top of your phone, and there's also a spot for a light. So you can actually take much better – and actually, I was saying this on a pre-show. It really – when I first bought it, I was like, this is stupid. I do a lot of videos. There's no way this is going to stabilize the video. It actually does, and it also has your um, – what do we call these things? Call the light. No, not the light. The, for, the, no, for your tripod. Mount. Yeah, it's a tripod mount. Like tripod said, yeah. knob, yeah. So yep. it's got it's got that on there, so you can do better Facebook live videos, Instagram live videos. It just works real well. This thing was like twenty four bucks. The microphone, which actually makes a ton of difference, is uh, about fifty nine dollars. It's a Rode Video Mic, is what it's called. So with those two things, you can do better videos on, for under a hundred bucks, and you can introduce your cat as well. She heard ger gerbil. Your cat. Yeah, heard my cat heard. I mean, my cat's like gerbil. Get your peel out of the way. Small rodent, and your cat came coming. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> this is Ben Dito. He, he, he sleeps all day until it's time to go live on podcasting. He's like, ooh, the star of the show is here. What are your other two wishing? <laughs> and then, Greg, you've got a little device that you wanted to show off too, right? Oh, yeah. That, that's like talk about that in public. Okay. All right. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I did say a little device. You're the one that left. So. Oh, man. What, 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 what little device? Seriously. Uh, the light for your phone. Oh, yes. It comes in your extremely masculine. Masculine bag. pink, light pink, you know, <laughs> just in case it gets confused with my dark pink bags. Um, this was introduced to me by my dear, dear, good friend, Stevie Hahn. Um, it is a ring light. So you, what you do is you press a little button on the back here. It automatically illuminates. You place it on top of the phone. And now you can uh, shoot video from a front camera. But it's reeled with the iPhone 10. It kind of blocks the blocks it in the back so we'll see how that works but 12 bucks really awesome doesn't work so well with glasses because then it looks like i just have two huge rodent eyes you know we're staring back at you uh but it is a really cool device if you want to shoot and you need better lighting for well listen greg ones. hold on greg quick no, 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 don't put it away quick <laughs> tech tip there it it's blocking your camera on your iphone because you should be shooting in landscape try to put it on here well then it will work see Thanks, there you go that's the move right there Ba bam, ba bam, Fixed. <laughs> Fixed. Problem solved. Thanks to Volpe. Thank you, Mimi. Go. Right. All right, guys. So, uh, so let's wrap up with this. Tanya and Michael, you guys have co-written a book. Uh, so, Tanya, what's the best way for people to uh, to grab the book and then connect with you guys and learn more about what you do? Yeah, it's brandfacerealestate.com, and then of course the book's on Amazon as well. Awesome. And Very it's cool. been revised. It's the updated version of it. Make sure you get the updated version. That was brand <laughs> new. <laughs> and then what's the best way to uh, to connect with you guys if somebody might want to work with you and hire you guys to uh, revamp their brand? Basically, same thing. Just go to brandfacerealestate.com. The email addresses on there are ours. They come directly to us. You know, any email address on there comes directly to us, and, and we'll connect with you there. Very cool. All right. Jane, same question for you. So I have a little different answer today. 
I actually just posted a video on GeneVolpe.com. It's the latest video blog post mm -hmm. that has actual links in it to these devices if you're interested in buying them for yourself. So if you click the links on my GeneVolpe.com latest blog, you can actually get these two things that, you're that I was talking about. Well, nice. what, what, just uh, for the audio listeners, what is that thing called, though? I mean, if they were going to go look for it, this know, is, is a, it called? It's, it's called a, an iPhone or an Android stabilizer, and I think it's made by TumbleCat. TumbleCat. Again, yeah. kitty. Good. <laughs> Matt, I just like to watch All your right. face. <laughs> and then, uh, Greg, what's the best way to connect with you, and why should they do that? Ever. Guys, I want you to go to bookmcdaniel.com. If you're watching this, it is literally right there on the screen. Uh, if you're listening to this, again, bookmcdaniel.com. Book 30 minutes with me. Talk. Let's talk about EXP, homies. If you, if what Matt and I are, have been doing for the last two, three and a half years been bringing value to you, um, then please join our team with EXP. We have a Kim Kardashian ass of value in the back. We have you know, trainings, we have coaching. I just want to see Tanya. <laughs> She's like, oh my God. <laughs> I almost didn't say it on the show, but I had to go there. Um, it's okay. <laughs> you know, mastermind classes, we have a wide variety of different products and services and people we're gonna connect you to, not to mention my boy, my boy Mike T, knuckles to you, homie. Uh, he has uh, Instagram stuff, and he'll turn it on, it's about $500 a month, he'll give it to you for free. Uh, the first month, and he'll he's put 4,500 new people on my Instagram in two and a half months. So just get your visibility out there, get your ability to recruit, you know, to sell houses and buy houses. So book some time, guys. Seriously, go to bookmcdaniel.com. Let's book some time. Let's talk about EXP. Let's see if it's the right move. It might not be, but it also it might be. So let's get let's get let's get some snuggle time, and we'll figure it out. So <laughs> that's right, and then. Uh, <laughs> if you would like to not snuggle with Greg, you can also just go <laughs> directly to Farm Like Greg, uh, and you can uh, get our complete farming strategy to high-tech, high-touch real estate farming. Uh, we don't talk about that nearly as much as we should, but that's like a ridiculous training class with eight hours of content that essentially lays out a complete geographic and demographic uh, marketing strategy for you along with a menu of tactics that you can choose from to pull it in uh, pull it all together with like the different elements of your personality matching those up to what uh, the different menu of options that works uh, and so there's a lot there it's ridiculously cheap I think it's 99 bucks farmlikegreg.com so check that out uh, and I think that will about do it make sure that you leave us um, uh, if you enjoyed the show especially leave us a five-star review on iTunes be sure to call out the guest Thank them publicly uh, to let you know, you know, what show you watched and why you enjoyed them and stuff like that. Uh, pay it forward to them. Um, and otherwise, we just love that you guys share the show. We don't run any ads for the show. The show grows because you guys tell people about it. So we love that you guys do that. You tell your fellow agents in your office and you tell your brokers. And uh, we just actually booked because of somebody doing that. Somebody in Michigan told their broker. Uh, no, somebody in Michigan told somebody at the Michigan Board of Realtors about us we are now speaking officially mm -hmm. september 26th at the michigan realtor expo in traverse city uh so for all of our michigan peeps or anyone within driving distance of beautiful and scenic traverse city michigan uh in september come out and see us so if you would like us to come speak tell somebody tell a, That's tell a player say. fool damn yeah, tell <laughs> <laughs> right. so i got a so serious question for that? tanya and michael what is the color on the front of your book the color? Mm hmm Which one? Black, red, or orange? <laughs> you, pick, you pick your favorite. <laughs> orange, 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 orange all the way. That's the logo. Right okay. here's the back of the book. How's okay. That? Matt, you know what we need to do. Yes, we, we need to put a nice black and orange striped bow upon this episode. Tie it with yes. a nice little bow. Yes. <laughs> oh, by the way, I got to totally okay. tell you this, dude. Veronica Jones, love you for this, Knuckles. Uh, she has enrolled you and has given you a certificate for needlepoint, Matt. So you are, uh, he, she paid for the class, you know, a couple thousand dollars, but you know, you're going to be a certified needle pointer by the end of the summer. Right. Isn't that great, fun? Great. Uh -huh. great. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you, Veronica. We appreciate that. Uh, we'll be contacting you shortly for all the details. <laughs> Make me happy. <laughs> All right, guys. Hey, we, we absolutely adore every single one of you guys that either watches us or listens to us. We are flattered and humbled that you guys spend your time with us and that when you reach back and you actually, you know, tell us about your successes. We have one of our success stories. She's booked for the show already. She's so going to come on and talk about what she's put into, into her business based upon the show. I mean, you have no idea 
how much that touches both me and Matt and how happy we are that you guys are out there living the life of your dreams, making some serious cash, and just laughing along the, the whole journey with us as we make fools of ourselves when we keep you guys entertained, educated, and, and, and moving forward. So I love you. Matt kind of loves you. Um, and Gene, of course, is in love with you. But I, just, I, have, I, have small, I have a small capacity for love in my heart, and it's all full. It's just small. Black little piece of coal. That's right. <laughs> All right, guys, <laughs> until next time, tell someone about the show. I love you, and peace out, ninjas. We go.